Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be ranking the best healers, ranged, and melee classes for rated BGs. So, even if you're a casual player looking to decide on a strong spec to help you break into the RBG scene, or a seasoned veteran wanting to build the best composition available, then this video is for you. This video has been put together with the help of expert opinions from the highest rated battleground team in Europe to make sure that we give you the best possible information that is available. But before we get into things, we wanted to let you know that we recently relaunched our World of Warcraft site over at skillcap.com. It's got a brand new look and our core system is filled with introductory class guides for every class from some of the best players around, including Chanimal, Maro, Zipai, and Zuniaki, just to name a few. We've got courses packed with arena commentaries, user reviews, and even a new course dedicated strictly to battlegrounds, including strategy guides, live commentaries, and even full games with comps. So if you want to take your arena or BG gameplay and knowledge to the next level, head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today. Link in the description below. And if you're interested in joining our quickly growing community discord that now has over 6,000 members to help you with your PVP needs, including our Ask the Pro channel, we've also got that linked in the description. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. Kicking things off first with our melee rankings, we've got our lowest tier of C, in which the first edition is going to be Enhancement Shaman. Now, Enhancement has been no stranger to the bottom of tier list for some time. Despite that though, they've seen a recent resurgence in Arena being one of the most dominant melee. But sadly, that just doesn't transition well into rated BGs. Enhancement lacks many integral tools that make a strong melee. Their sustained damage is relatively low, they offer no mortal strike effect, they're very easy to kill, offer no CC, and they can really struggle for uptime on a lot of maps. And simply put, Enhancement just wouldn't ever be taken over any of the stronger melee on our list, especially with comps heavily favoring more ranged specs, so things like Wind Fury loses a lot of value. Joining Enhance in our bottom tier, we've got Fury Warrior. Fury Warriors right now are just not in a good state at all. Their damage is extremely low, they offer no mortal strike, and generally just don't bring anything special to BGs. Fury did see some play throughout BFA due to the power of Deathwish and a spammable AoE slow from Piercing Howl, but with Piercing Howl now having a CD and their mobility being nerfed from Blood Rage, Fury is even weaker now in Shadowlands. Sure, the added mobility from the PvP talent Barbarian can be nice on a few maps for some niche strategies when combined with the Timeless Stratagem Legendary, but sadly, Fury remains to be just the ugly stepsister of the Arms Warrior and subsequently has no place in rated BGs. Then, the third melee spec making it into our C tier is going to be Outlaw Rogue. Much like Fury, Outlaw is just the weaker alternative to the Subtlety Rogue. As a rogue, your main objective and the reason you're picked in RBGs is going to be for defending or assaulting bases, two things that Outlaw just infinitely does worse than Sub Rogue, mainly due to the lack of shadowy duel and any way to easily spin a base as you lack Fan of Knives. Then, on maps where you're required to teamfight, you're again just lackluster, weak burst, minimal cleave, less lockdown than subtlety, there just isn't any reason to bring Outlaw following the same demise and once again falling into our lowest tier for pretty much the same reasoning, we have Assassination Rogue. Similar to Outlaw, the lower burst, reduced lockdown, and lack of shadowy duel just means Assassination isn't ever a desired spec for BGs. That being said though, Assassination does actually bring some decent teamfight pressure on maps like Silver Shard Mines, where enemies are consistently grouped up. But in a meta where Lockdown and Burst is so highly regarded, the AoE cleave of Assassination just doesn't cut it anymore. And for that reason, it's hard to place Assassination much higher on our list. If we do see any major nerfs to sub, this may change in the future though, and Assassination could be the pick on more teamfight-centric maps like Battle for Gilneas when running with Double Rope. Also falling into our lowest tier, we have Unholy DK. Unholy DK is, simply put, just not very good. The only benefit you provide is the offensive auras and AoE grip from Abomination Limb, but even then, Frost provides the same tools. Unholy's main source of damage is mostly just spread cleave damage from diseases, and with Disc Priest being one of the most common healers, this is for the most part just easily outhealed by Atonement Healing. For specs to take a melee slot in RBG, they need to contribute heavily in either impactful area of effect damage or single target damage. 
Unholy's only saving grace is that they can sit bases and defend relatively well with Abomination and their pet, but alas, again, other specs do it a lot better and secure Unholy their spot at the bottom of our tier list. Harpooning into our lowest tier as well, we've got Survival Hunter. Survival provides decent slows and roots, but damage-wise is just borderline useless. Not to mention, with all the AoE cleave going out, your pet, which you heavily rely on for damage, instantly dies over and over, and as a result, you're going to have to consistently cast Revive Pet instead of doing damage. Honestly, not much to say here, some specs just don't do well in RBGs. Then our final addition dropping into the tier is going to be Feral Druid. Another spec which does very well in the arena meta, but this again doesn't translate well into RBGs. Feral's main issue is that they lack any form of mortal strike effect, and with melee slots being taken mainly by rogues and strong melee, Feral just doesn't have any niche. Balanced Druids are also one of the most dominant classes, which again, only serves to push Feral down the list. If you sign up to a RBG group as a Druid, and they see your Feral, it's unlikely you'll be staying. Much like Enhancement, you're a squishy melee that doesn't bring any real additions to teamfights other than some decent single target burst. Alright, that's our lowest tier completed, let's move on to the B tier. For those of you interested in RBGs, the next one may come as a shock if you're used to previous expansions and seasons. And that's Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter has fallen out of the meta for a few reasons. First of all is that they are no longer the strongest flag carrier as now Guardian Druid has taken that place. DH was also strong due to their mobility and ability to quickly break off and assault bases. This was mostly due to their ability to beat rogues 1v1. If a DH came to your base, you would always need help. But now, with buffs to sub, nerfs to DH, this is no longer the case, as you'll almost always lose the 1v1. While they've never been the strongest team fighting melee, having a lack of damage, no mortal strike effect, and not much CC, the main problem is that they've lost their main niches. That being said though, their mobility and spectral sight is still a very valuable asset and secures them their B tier ranking. Also making their way into our B tier, we've got Frost DK. Unlike Unholy, Frost does a lot more impactful single target damage, as well as some decent cleave from Howling Blast making them a lot stronger. But the main reason for their ranking is their ability to lock down large groups of enemies with Death Grip, Abomination Limb, and Binding Sleet, and then following up with some large AoE stuns from Frostworm's Fury combined with the Absolute Zero Legendary. Not to mention, having Delirium, Heart Stop, and Necrotic Aura offer a lot inside of teamfights, as well as their ability to consistently slow and lock down targets on certain maps like Silver Shard Mines. Why DKs don't get put higher on this list is that they just provide a lot less pressure than some of our better melees and need to be in a more melee-focused composition for them to work well, and with so many specs being so essential, it's hard to place them any higher. Alright, that rounds up our bottom two tiers. Up next, we've got our A tier. This time we have a class whose strength in Arena actually transitions well into RBGs, and that's Arms Warrior. Arms Warrior does some of the highest single target pressure in the game, which makes your overall teamfight pressure incredibly strong, especially if they focus on a squishy target. A combination of their Kyrian ability, Spear of Bastion, to lock down targets also only adds to an overloaded toolkit with things like Intervene on your Flag Carrier on Flag Maps, Rallying Cry for a strong team defensive, and even War Banner to reduce CC. However, the strongest ability that Arms Warriors provide is Sharpen Blade. This, when coordinated with your team in RBGs, is a great way of securing kills. Then, you've got some decent cleave pressure from your Bladestorm. The only real weakness of Arms and why it's not any higher is that on non-teamfight maps, it doesn't provide too much. You can't sit bases, you lack mobility, and require uptime in order to do well. Next up, we once again have a spec who is dominant in Arena, and that carries well into RBG. Windwalker Monks have never really had a spot when it comes to RBGs, but now with their undeniable strength, they make one of the strongest melees, especially on small skirmish or flag maps. The main reason for this is the Kiefer's Sky Reach Legendary, allowing them to have near permanent uptime on flag carriers. Much like a few other specs though, they bring almost nothing utility-wise, but when it comes to pure pressure, they are the strongest melee. Put them on a Warlock in a teamfight and it equates to almost unhealable damage combined with a healing reduction. It's mainly just their lack of utility and cleave damage holding them back from reaching our highest tier, but don't let that sway you from picking up a Windwalker Monk in your RBG groups. Alright then everyone, we've now reached our melee S tier, so the best melee specs when it comes to RBG. The first of which is Ret Paladin. 
Rep Paladin over the years has been very hit or miss when it comes to RBGs, they are either insane or completely unviable. Well, luckily for Rhett, they are now one of the best melee. They are essentially a fourth healer that brings a ton of utility, as well as some of the highest burst in the game and consistent AoE pressure. On flag maps, they offer a ton of utility for their flag carrier when playing in defense. On maps like Silver Shard or Eye of the Storm, they do the highest cleave damage in the game, and then on small skirmish or teamfight maps, their healing and burst is just absurd. Their healing is mainly thanks to the PvP talent Luminescence, which, when combined with Disc Priests, offers your team so much passive healing. Further combine this with consistent full heals from Word of Glory, combined with Healing Hands, Blessing of Protection, Blessing of Sacrifice, and even Freedoms, and you can see how they're essentially a fourth healer. Their damage is mostly coming from Avenging Wrath, then while it's down, they don't provide much damage. But inside of RBGs, thanks to the talent Aura of Reckoning, Wings are nearly a permanent uptime. And if you've played any PvP at all, you'll know just how scary a Rep Paladin is with Wings up. There is no question, Rep Paladin is the strongest melee DPS option. And finally, rounding out our S tier and the final addition to the melee portion of this video, we've got the must-have RBG staple of Subtlety Rogue. Subtlety's strength is mainly contributed to how essential they are inside of RBGs. Every competitive composition is required to have at least one, but preferably two. This is down to them being an integral objective spec. They can sit bases, they can assault bases, and they can, of course, move around the map in stealth. Without a sub rogue, you're going to pretty much automatically lose any objective map as well as struggle on flag maps. Tools like Vanish, Shadowy Duel, Blind, Sap, and Kidney Shot are just too valuable to ever be without. Then, for those maps where it's more teamfight centric, one sub rogue in a teamfight can really make a difference. With the meta currently being so burst oriented and revolving around one shots, having the ability to lock down multiple targets with Cheap Shot and offering Smoke Bomb makes them invaluable for setups. All right then everyone, that's our melee RBG portion complete on screen now, you'll see the quick recap. Up next, we've got ranged. As always, let's start off with our lowest tier of C. And this probably comes as no surprise to anybody, but our first edition is going to be Demonology. Demonology just has so many flaws with its core design when it comes to PvP. Having a ramp up class inside of PvP just does not cut it. Simply put, they offer less damage than both Destro and Affliction and are required to consistently cast in order to deal damage, and with Warlocks being one of the best targets to train, you can see how this just doesn't bode well. Not to mention, your Wild Imps summoned by Hands of Gul'dan can actually benefit the enemy team giving certain classes a boost in their area of effect and single target pressure onto players. Another spec which is no stranger to the bottom of PvP lists is BM Hunter, and rated BGs is no exception to that. BM does very low damage both single target and cleave, and as we all know, heavily relies on their pet for damage. In a scenario where you have multiple dot classes and a lot of damage going out, pets die incredibly quickly just from passive cleave. This means that your pet is just going to die over and over, and you'll be stuck casting a 5 second summon, and god forbid the enemy team look to interrupt you on it. BM does have the saving grace of being able to defend bases, but even then, there are just better specs for that. Then, for our final addition to our lowest range tier, we've got Arcane Mage. Arcane Mage suffers the same fate of Outlaw and Assassination. It just doesn't have a niche. Fire does more damage, Frost has more slows, and Arcane just doesn't provide anything that the other two specs don't do better. You're a weak spec in teamfights, can't sit bases, offer nothing objectively, and as a result, Arcane just finds itself in our bottom tier. Jumping up a tier, now we've got some stronger specs, including Frost Mage. Frost Mage, unlike Arcane, offers some value due to its powerful slows and ability to defend bases. Frost makes a decently strong defender due to its ability to spin with Frozen Orb, and the fact that it has a pet and the ability to get out of CC and survive with Ice Block. Then, on maps like Silver, Shard, Mines, and Flag maps where mobility is so important, the consistent roots and slows and CC can really aid in helping your Flag Carrier survive or your team rotate the map in the case of Silver, Shard, Mine. What holds Frost back from getting higher on this list, though, is their lack of damage, both single target and cleave. Not to mention, Polymorph isn't really that impactful inside of RBGs. Joining Frost Mage in our A tier, we've got Destro Warlock. Destro had previously been dominating the RBG scene with their incredibly potent Chaos Bolt casts and high damage. Shadowlands saw many nerfs to Chaos Bolt, both direct nerfs to its damage and modifiers, and indirect nerfs from things like Lack of Haste. 
As a result, it's incredibly difficult to get out any real impactful damage, and even then, it's nowhere near the level of Affliction's AoE burst. Also, having a large chunk of your damage coming from long casts once again just doesn't cut it for an organized BG scenario. Regardless, Destro can still be decent thanks to its utility from Gateway, Healthstone, and the ability to sit bases. Just for the most part, it's held back by the strength of Affliction. Alright, with those two additions, that rounds off our B tier. Next, we're jumping into our penultimate tier, the A tier. Our first spec is one that you would on paper think is a lot stronger, Shadow Priest. Again, this is another spec which has been dominating Arena, but falls short when it comes to RBGs. Shadow Priest prior to Shadowlands always provided a ton of damage to teamfights, making them one of the strongest specs. But changes to their spec design has shifted a lot of their damage into more single target and less AoE pressure and casters that deal single target damage are not really desirable for obvious reasons, especially not the type of consistent pressure that Shadow provides. That being said though, Shadow can still get out a lot of spread pressure if left to cast freely, but it's just nothing when compared to the level of some of our strongest ranged specs. But the CC, Siphene, and Void Shift are what helps elevate Shadow up to our A tier. And joining them we've got the RBG Kings, MM Hunters. MM is one of the strongest specs for BGs by design sitting back, chunking enemies with a range nobody else can touch you. Well, yes, it's very strong, but in rated BGs, MM is a little weaker. The damage is very predictable, and if healers play well, you're not going to get much done. Outside of your stationary damage, you also offer very little in terms of utility. Freezing Trap is basically useless, you can't afford to play with a pet, and only really provide a short duration interrupt. Last though, MM is still the strongest RBG spec for Hunter by far, and it does decently well. Then to round off our A tier, we have a spec which doesn't really do well in RBG generally speaking, and that's Fire Mage. Fire Mage right now does incredibly well in heavy caster compositions where other specs can soak up interrupts for you. What makes Fire strong is its one-shot capabilities. Killing a single player with some ridiculous burst can win you a teamfight almost instantly, and Fire Mage has multiple ways of doing this. There's Greater Pyro, Pyroclasm, and of course Combustion, all three of which deal some ridiculous damage. That's really all Fire has going for it though. The CC of Polymorph isn't too useful. They don't provide any slows or utility. Overall, it's just the pure burst damage that they can provide, but that's enough to elevate them into our A tier inside of the right comp. And that's going to wrap up our A tier. So let's jump up to our ultimate tier, the S tier. First of which is Elemental Shaman. Elemental follows the same sort of reasoning as Fire Mage. Got some ridiculous levels of burst with your Necrolord Covenant ability, Stormkeeper, and Echoing Shock, capable of just deleting enemies in teamfights. But what elevates Elemental is that it's all instant damage, and unlike Mage, with the exception of Combustion, it's a lot easier to set up, while their overall damage is also a lot stronger with consistent Lava Bursts and Flame Shock damage. Ellie also provides a ton of very strong utility. Sky Fury helps out all casters and healers, Grounding is insanely strong for shutting down enemy damage, and the mobility that you have with Ghost Wolf makes you great at moving around the map, not to mention Frost Shock is a great way to slow multiple enemies when doing so. Overall, a very dominant caster in the RBG scene, and a must-have for most comps. Then joining Elemental in our highest tier, we've of course got Affliction Warlocks. If you want a high damage caster that's going to get a spot in RBGs every single time, then this is it. Affliction does hands down the highest damage in any game without question. High pressure from Agony and Corruption, and even Dispel Protection from Unstable Affliction, giving healers a very hard time with Dispels, with huge AoE burst using Malefic Rupture. Affliction, alongside their unrivaled damage output, provide must-have utility from Demonic Gateway and Healthstone. The only real downside to this spec is how squishy they are, but in RBGs this is more easily masked over with many more defensive cooldowns and healing to spare. And our final addition to the S tier is of course going to be Balanced Druid. Balanced Druid is pretty much the ultimate caster inside of RBGs. You have very strong rot pressure from your instant dots, moonfire, and sunfire, with the ability to also deal ridiculous burst damage with star surge. You've got great mobility to move around the map, and even have the ability to stealth, making you able to assault or defend bases. Balance also has the most powerful CC in rated BGs, coming from Cyclone. Oh, and yeah, Convoke the Spirits also exists. Convoke in rated BGs is crazy. Given the right RNG, you can instantly wipe a team if you're able to get a channel off, especially if you have multiple boomkins, which you should. Balance also gets extra points as Guardian Druid is the recommended tank for flag maps, so having a Balance Druid capable of respecking is very important. 
All right, that's going to do it for our range tier list. Again, on screen, you'll now see a recap. Up next, we've got healers. And you know the drill by now, we'll start off with our lowest tier of C. The first of which going into this lowest tier is Holy Priest. Holy is another spec that just falls very short when it comes to RBGs. The pure healing output it's capable of is just far weaker than any other healer by miles. Prayer of Mending and Renew make up some decent AoE healing, but then for single target, you've got only Serenity, which takes too many casts for you to get back. Prayer of Healing and Divine Hymn just don't do enough healing either. But Holy is a very fun spec to play nonetheless, with many niche and fun abilities to utilize, and can even be decent on flag maps to heal the flag carrier thanks to tools like Guardian Angel or Ray of Hope. But even then, most other healing specs do a better job. But honestly, for their sheer lack of healing output, we can't justify putting them any higher on this list. Moving up one tier now into our B tier, we've got Resto Druid. Resto is actually capable of pumping out some very strong healing, especially combined with the memory of the Mother Tree Legendary, combined with the PvP talent Early Spring. Druids are also unique in the fact that they are the only healer that can go in stealth and are also the most mobile, which is very valuable when it comes to RBGs. Where they fall short though is their burst healing. With the meta being so burst oriented right now, Resto Druid has no way to easily save targets, especially once Treeform is down and when you add this to their very obvious mana issues, it's not a good combination. And what's holding them back even more so is the Priest Ability Thought Steal. As every single team in RBGs, with at least one Priest, this can render you completely useless by stealing your Rejuvenation, making you play essentially a healer down for 20 seconds, resulting in you being a very severe disadvantage in teamfights. Also finding themselves in our B tier, we've got Mistweaver Monks. Mistweaver for some time has been an essential part of any RBG team. They provide great mobility and the ability to quickly peel to parts of the map where healing is required. The great single target healing that they can pump out also makes them great at healing flag carriers. A major issue with Mistweaver right now and what's caused such a fall from grace is mainly down to the meta. Mistweavers are one of the easiest healers to kill in a stun and end up being one of the most frail RBG healers. Most of their healing also comes from having to cast, which is something that a lot of our higher ranked healers don't have to do too much of. Mistweaver right now is just in a terrible state in all forms of PvP, so we expect to see some buffs soon and for them to rise back to their former glory. This is one to watch for sure. Jumping up once again now to our A tier, we've got Resto Shaman. Restoration Shamans have a very strong kit, including strong instant healing from Riptide, Earth Shield with Earth and Harmony Legendary, and Tidebringer Chain Heals. Strong defensives with Earthen Wall Totem and Spirit Link, and even good utility with Sky Fury and Grounding Totem, as well as Sheer. And they even offer great mobility thanks to Ghost Wolf. Despite this, they've not made it to our S tier just yet, and the reason behind this is that they just do less healing or provide less defensives than our S tier specs. But nevertheless, Resto Shaman is a very solid RBG healer, and in most compositions can fit in very well. All right, we've now reached our S tier, and these two healers are the strongest healers in RBGs by a fair margin and are an integral part of the best comps right now. First of which is Discipline Priest. This is by far the healer with the highest output, and it's not even comparable. Thanks to Atonement and multiple targets, Disc is able to use Atonement to its fullest, blanket healing the raid through all AoE damage. Strong cooldowns like Barrier of Light, Pain Suppression, or Rapture also help to keep your raid alive through high burst damage. But more importantly, and what's ascended Disc to its current level is the Shining Radiance Conduit combined with Ultimate Radiance. These two in conjunction with modifiers like Twist of Fate enable Disc to essentially full heal half the raid with the press of an instant button. And in such a burst field meta, having an AoE instant lay on hands on a short cooldown is kind of insane. The addition of mind games also helps your team offensively while still dealing good healing just all around the best raid healer in rated RPGs, and as a result, most top compositions look to have too. But Discipline Priests are nothing without their partner in crime. While they bring the AoE healing, they need somebody to do single target spot healing. And what else better than a Holy Paladin? Holy Paladin brings great mana efficiency, strong single target healing, and some of the best defensive CDs available. The addition of Concentration Aura and Aura Mastery to make your team immune to interrupts for things like Convoke the Spirits is just icing on the cake. Bop, Sacrifice, and Freedom are also must-have for most maps, and the ability to save teammates is a necessity. While they are the best for spot healing, Paladin still does bring some very competitive overall healing, making them just a very strong all-around healer and a must-have for any RBG composition. 
All right then, that's our healer tier list wrapped up. Once again, you'll see a recap on the screen. And that does it for our healer, ranged and melee tier lists for RBGs. If you want to see more RBG content, be sure to let us know in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.